Reality really does come at you hard. Whether you're a wannabe Mr. Universe trying to lift way beyond his capacity with no spotter on hand, or a drunken 20-something woman that's watched too many Marvel movies and thinks she can take on a grown man twice her size, or in this case, the CEO of a multi-billion dollar entertainment company who decided it was a good idea to wade into the middle of a highly divisive culture war and somehow not expect to alienate a massive chunk of their potential audience. I'm talking of course about Bob Iger, the CEO of Disney and the man largely responsible for changing the company's public perception from a wholesome, patriotic, family-friendly and highly respected entertainment brand that strove to honour the ideals and principles of its founder into a sinister corporate behemoth that gobbles up studios and IPs quicker than Lizzo consumes hors d'oeuvres at a party, cannibalises and destroys beloved franchises and legacy characters with a series of disastrous sequels and soulless remakes, and uses the hard work and talent of previous previous generations as a convenient platform to push THE MESSAGE. To put it in diplomatic terms, this turned out to be a sub-optimal strategy. And in case the collapsing share value, cratering park attendance, flatlining box office revenue and highly publicised and damaging political battles weren't enough to clue you in on this fact, then a recent statement by old Bob himself during an investor's presentation at Disney World that he wants to quiet the noise around the culture war is really the final nail in the coffin. It's the executive equivalent of saying, yeah. I fucked up bro. And it's as close as we're likely to get to a public admission that people aren't buying what they've been selling no matter how many times they try to do it. And the only option now is to either change course rapidly or go bankrupt. Now I have to admit, my first reaction to this statement was... <laughs> As I said on Twitter at the time, it's a bit like setting fire to your neighbourhood and then acting all surprised when your own house starts burning down. Of course this was always going to happen, Bob. Did you really think you could drag your company into a highly contentious cultural battleground like this and not suffer the consequences? That's the problem with politics, you see. It's inherently divisive by nature, now more than ever. And no matter which side you choose to throw your weight behind, you're automatically going to piss off the other side, cutting your potential audience neatly in half. I mean, I'm no businessman, but I'm pretty sure this is not a winning business strategy. And I'm not gonna lie here, the audience that you chose to pander to is a particularly difficult one to please, because here's the thing, it doesn't really exist in the first place. It's less of a demographic group and more of a loose collection of terminally online, perpetually offended serial complainers for whom the idea of nuance and compromise is as offensive and alien as having to listen to conflicting points of view. People like that will never be happy. No no matter how much of your previous work you censor and remove and edit to try to appease them, they'll always find a new thing to be offended and outraged by. No matter how many concessions you make, no matter how much ground you give them, their demand is always going to be the same. More. Until eventually they'll demand something that you can't give them, in which case you'll become the enemy just like everyone else. I mean, look what happened to Bob Chapek, who committed the heinous crime of not wanting to get the company embroiled in a highly divisive political debate in Florida against a man with the power to massively fuck things up for Disney. Before you knew it, the activists were all over it and Bob was forced into a humiliating public climb down. And tell me, did this actually help your business in any way? Did people suddenly flock to your theme parks or rush out to see your movies? Didn't think so. The only thing that did happen is that you lost the special tax exemption status for the land around your theme parks, massively increasing your operating costs, and got dragged into a protracted and very expensive legal battle that's still going on even now. And what's kind of sad here is that none of this needed to happen. This isn't a hill that you had to die on. Why? Because you're a fucking entertainment company, not a political party. Normal, everyday people don't want or need you to champion a cause or push forward an agenda because that's not your job. Normal people don't need you to fight for or against them or to praise or lecture them. Normal people watch your movies or go to your theme parks to have a bit of fun, to escape the worries and pressures of everyday life for a couple of hours, to lose themselves in the fantasy for a while. This right here is your core audience. This is your core audience. This is your core audience. This is not. 
And the last thing your core audience wants from a family entertainment company is to run into the same preachy, divisive pandering they get bombarded with on a daily basis. And the thing is, while I can at least respect the fact that Iger's finally acknowledged the problem he created and what he needs to do to fix it, I don't think he appreciates the monumental effort it's actually going to take. Talk is cheap, actions are what counts here, and this one's going to require the Mount fucking Everest of actions to put right. Disney as a corporation is riddled with this stuff now at every level, it's become part of the corporate culture, mostly because he allowed it to happen. He let the foxes into the hen house, and not only are they eating all of his chicken, but they're multiplying at an exponential rate. And believe me, they are not going to leave without a fight. Getting rid of them is going to require mass firings on a level never before seen, gutting the company from top to bottom, not to mention ongoing vigilance to make sure they never get back in. And to be honest, I just don't know if a 72 year old man who's already postponed his retirement multiple times has the resources, the energy or the political capital to get the job done. Reality truly does come at you hard, but I think in this Disney's case, they might be a few years too late in acknowledging it. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Go away now.